I just want to welcome you all to this to the Norman Williams Library, um, and we're we're very pleased that we can offer uh, events to the public. And if you want to get on our newsletter, let me know, and we'll sign you up. Without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Sharon. Marianne. Marianne, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Sharon's name. I can't talk and look at a word at the same time. That's right. Marianne. Yes. So, okay. Oh, she's turning me on now. Um, anyway, I'm Marianne Koch. Uh, I am the president of the Green Mountain Quilters Guild. Um, for those that are just coming in, there's some handouts on the back table, uh, right, well, on the side table, and a check in sheet. Um, anyway, uh, the Green Mountain Quilters Guild is a statewide guild. Uh, it includes individuals that are quilting and also um, guilds, uh, quilt guilds. And uh, we also cover a little bit of New Hampshire because there's a couple of New Hampshire people here too, which is fun. Um, we uh, see our mission really as bringing together different quilting um, efforts around the state and uh, raising awareness about different efforts, including barn quilts, which are not, as you know, um, cloth, but usually wood. Um, and we really feel it's important for us, because we are a statewide group, to help um, develop the barn quilt trail. And if, because of that, we're holding meetings periodically um, to give people some help in uh, creating their barn quilts and hanging them. And uh, then we also want to identify barn quilts around the state uh, for people who are maybe not quilters at all, just like to see them on different outbuildings. So today, um, mostly today, um, Sharon Perry from uh, Franklin County will be talking. We do have a couple of projects around the state, and the most successful bar and quilt project, I think, is in Franklin County and oozing outside of Franklin County. Um, Sharon Perry is here to tell us a little bit more about the project and how they got started and where they're going. I'm gonna steal this. Which button do I need to push for me being on? <laughs> Well, thank you, Mary Ann, for inviting me today. Um, I was hoping for a beautiful foliage ride down I-91 for two hours. I didn't get that. I got a lot of fog. But the foliage that I did see was beautiful. So um, my name is Sharon Perry. I live in the far northern reaches of Vermont, up near the Canadian border in Montgomery. And normally, Fern Mercure, who I have dubbed the founder of the Franklin Bond, County Barn Quilt Trail is with me, and we do kind of a dog and pony show. But the ponies at home, she had a Calcutta last night with the Shelving Historical Society, and she has a house full of family for today, so she couldn't make it. And I'll be talking primarily about the Franklin County Trail, um, but later in my presentation, I'll touch a little bit about how we fit into the Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail. And take note of this barn quilt um, because I'll be talking a little bit later in the presentation about it. So as an overview of tonight's or today's presentation, um, I'll first give some basic information about the trail. Uh, we'll talk about timeline of the trail activities, how it started, when it grew. Talk a little bit about the current brochure that I hope you'll all grab a copy because I'm going to be referring to this later in the presentation. Um, and then I'll be giving you a demonstration of our interactive website for the Franklin County Barn Quilt Trail. Um, I'll show you the URL for the website and show you a little bit of uh, a few of the features that you can use if you want to go out and find some of the barn quilts in Franklin County. By the way, 
if nobody knows where Franklin County is, it's the far northwestern county in the state. Well, actually, Grand Isle is a little bit further, but it's the far northwestern biggest county up there. <clears throat> Um, and then I'm going to be talking about a few resources that are available and then talk a little bit about growing the uh, Barn Quilt Trail in Vermont, some of my um, ideas, or fern in my ideas. So the first 12 barn quilts in Franklin County were displayed uh, in 2010 as part of a project by the Sheldon, Sheldon Raiders Homemakers Club. I might also refer to the Sheldon Raiders Homemakers Club as the Home Den Group. They're one and the same. Um, and it just kind of spread to the other towns in Franklin County organically. Um, we have found that once you put a barn quilt up somewhere, they start popping up around that. So if you want to grow a barn quilt trail in your area, just put one up that's visible and others will start popping up or people will come start talking to you saying, hey, can you paint one for me? Um, and as I said, it started with the original 12 in 2010. 13 years later, we now have over 500 barn quilts that are documented in Franklin County. And it's all volunteer. It's Fern Mercury and myself. We go out and collect the data and then we give it all to my husband and he puts it on the website. The website was established in 2014 and there are locations, both a physical address and geocords and pictures of all the barn quilts. A lot of the barn quilt trails throughout the country have rules. Some of them have a rule to even put a barn quilt on the trail. You gotta pay money or do a sponsorship or whatever. We typically, we don't have any rules, except we're not gonna put it on the barn quilt trail map unless we can see it from the road because we don't want people willy nilly going up other people's driveways. So a little bit about the timeline of the barn quilt trail. And the whole na nationwide movement started with Donna Sue Grove in Ohio. Um, her mother was a quilter, and she decided she wanted to put up a barn quilt in honor of her mother, which she did in 2001. And it kind of sparked the nationwide barn quilt trail, which they call the American barn quilt trail movement. And how Franklin County's barn quilt trail first got started was Fern Mercure and her husband took a road trip from Vermont to California. Jim doesn't fly anywhere, so they drove all the way there. On the way back, they stopped in Elkhart County, Indiana, and that is home to a lot of barn quilts, and they're all eight by eight. They're not two by two, one by one, four by four. They're all eight by eights and um, all on barns. There's actually a, a county in Wisconsin, uh, Shawano County. They have over 400 eight, by, eight foot by eight foot barn quilts on actual barns. So if you're ever in that area, check it out. When Fern got home, lo and behold, a magazine that she subscribed to, Country Woman, arrived and there was a barn quilt article. So it was perfect timing. She presented it to her home dem group and the members were really interested. There were 11 women who actually painted their own barn quilts and they painted a 12th barn quilt to honor one of the founding member, members of their home dem group. And in late 2009, the members picked the designs and colors for their barn quilts. And then in early 2010, the members started painting their barn quilts at Fern's house. They were using her husband's workshop and their goal was to get them all painted and put up by Mother's Day. And I'm happy to report they were successful. Um, one of the um, women, her wasn't put up early in the day because 
They were all mostly on farm buildings and her husband was out doing farm work. And when he came back in and saw how disappointed she was that hers wasn't up yet on Mother's Day, he went out, took the tractor and put it up on the barn. The first trail brochure, which I have a copy of here with me, um, was printed in the late summer of 2010, and it only included the first 12 barn quilts. All 12 of these barn quilts, save one, um, can be viewed from either Route 105 going through Sheldon or on the East Sheldon Road. So this is a tour that would be fairly easy to complete. So there's only 11 on that particular part of the trail. And Fern's whole thought process was to get the word out to everybody. And apparently the word was getting out because a local Enosburg resident, Cindy Weed, who was also formerly a state legislator, she was, one of, she was a representative for my town in Enosburg, um, she wrote an article in a magazine called Living the Vermont Way. And Judy Simpson actually found out, from WCAX, actually found out about the Barn Quilt Trail in Franklin County. And she did a piece which aired on WCAX called Colorful Quilts Enhance Sheldon. And <coughs> after Fern and her group put up their barn quilts, in 2011, all these barn quilts started popping up in the surrounding communities namely Enosburg, Franklin, and Richford. And in 2012, the Home Dem Group printed the second brochure, which had 48 quilts highlighted. And they had addresses in some cases, like for Richford, they had a map um, showing where the barn quilts were located. In 2014, Fern contacted me. She heard that my husband maintained the Franklin County Quilters Guild website, and she was hoping that we could help her. One of the things that she wanted help with was printing yet another brochure, which we did help her with, but she also wanted to find out if we could develop some kind of website um, for the Franklin County Barn Quilt Trail. So the third brochure was printed up with 144 barn quilts. There it is. <clears throat> and my husband and I helped her print this one up. The Abbey uh, graciously paid for all the printing because the Home Dem Group doesn't really have any resources, especially money available to them. So they were very thankful that the Abbey restaurant up in Sheldon stepped in to pay for the printing. But we told Fern, my husband and I did, she couldn't sustain this, that it, she wasn't gonna have a big enough paper. And if she kept printing it like this, she was ha gonna have people carrying around the book to see all the barn books. So um, she continued with her effort to get the word out about the Franklin County Barn Quilt Trail. Uh, she did a presentation kind of as a thank you to the Franklin County Quilters Guild. I believe that was in um, September of 2014. She also had note cards of the original 12 barn quilts. They're beautiful note cards. And they printed them up as a fundraiser um, to raise some funds thinking in the future if they had to print yet another brochure, which they did. Um, they'd have a little bit of money. Uh, they also participated in an event that marked the 150th anniversary of the St. Albans Raid. Um, it was a, during the Civil War, it was a Civil War event. I don't know that it was a battle, but they robbed a bunch of banks up in St. Albans and tried to run across the Canadian border. And the um, Home Dem Group participated in that celebration and the Barn Quilt Trail featured prominently in their display. And by the end of 2014, Fern and I had been able to go out and collect data on some of the barn quilts for the website. And at the end of 2014, we had 
59 barn quilts documented on the website of those 144. In 2016, a gentleman contacted Fern. He lived in New York. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly where. I think some, somewhere near Rochester. His name was Jen, John Leto. And he published a Vermont barn quilt coloring book. These are available on Amazon. If you search for John Leto, L-E-T-T-A-U, it'll come up and he's published lots of coloring books for different barn quilt trails. Um, he published a second one in 2017, um, right before he passed away. He passed away in April of 2017, but there's another barn quilt uh, trail, Vermont barn quilt trail um, coloring book. And so you can color your own quilts. And for those quilters out there, if you wanna make one of these quilts, you have a sheet to color to figure out your color placement. There was also an article in a farming magazine out of Pennsylvania um, called the Vermont Barn Quilt Trail Inspired by Travel. And I was just amazed at all the different places in the country that were learning about our barn quilt trail. Um, Ever, um, the spokesman for the trail, Fern wrangled her way onto the VPR, Vermont Division, <coughs> edition broadcast with Jane Lindholm in 2018, and that was called How Barn Quilts Came to Blanket Franklin County. It's still out there, and if you do a search on VPR, uh, Barn Quilt, Jane Lindholm, it'll probably come up, and it's pretty entertaining. I'd suggest that if you wanted to, to go and listen to that broadcast. Also in 2018, um, my husband quit being the webmaster for the Franklin County Quilters Guild, and we didn't think it was right to ask the guild member who was taking over to also maintain the barn quilt trail, so we migrated <coughs> it over to barnquiltsofnorthernvermont.org. My husband and I own the domain name. We keep it up in everything. Um, but we wanted to get it off the Franklin County Quilters Guild webpage so they weren't ultimately responsible. Because it takes a lot more work maintaining the barn quilt trail map than it does maintaining the guild's website. My husband is back to being the webmaster again for the guild. <laughs> By late 2018, the trail had grown to over 200 barn quilts. Oops, uh-oh. All right, let me, I gotta escape out of this and get to the right one, because I jumped over it. <laughs> Sorry about that. So in 2019, the fourth brochure was printed. And that's the brochure that was sitting on people's tables or chairs, and it's available over there. We convinced Fern to highlight the first 12 barn quilts, since those were the original ones. And then there's information on where to find the map for all of the barn quilts in, on this brochure. At the time, in 2019, when this was printed, we had over 300 barn quilts. In 2021, the uh, Sheldon Raiders Homemakers Club celebrated their 50th anniversary, and they had a big display at the Sheldon Historical Society, and part of that display included a bunch of barn quilts inside the museum, but they had barn quilts that they had painted on that corrugated plastic board, and they put it on a fence. They had like six four by four barn quilts across from the museum. It was pretty impressive, but they didn't stay there, they've been moving around to different locations, and they didn't stay together, so those six are no longer together. And in 2021, the trail grew to over 400 barn quilts. Last year, it grew to over 500 barn quilts. And this year, we went out two times. We have 538 barn quilts at 453 locations. And Fern and I go out, and we have a list, and what happens is we finish 
our visits for the year, and like two days later, somebody reports a new barn quilt to us. <laughs> so I keep a list, Fern keeps a list, and then we combine our list. We usually have 20 to 30 barn quilts that we have to capture. Every time we go out, we can, if we have 20 barn quilts to capture, we capture 40 to 50. Because we're driving down the road, maybe a road we haven't been on before, and we find yet more barn quilts other than the one that we were looking for. Sometimes we don't even find the one that we were looking for, <laughs> but we find all these other ones. So guaranteed, if you put a barn quilt on your house, your barn, your whatever, and you can see it from the road, people can see it, you're gonna have other barn quilts popping up in your area. So looking at our brochure a little bit in detail, it tells a little bit about the history in the front of it. <clears throat> Talks about how you can find the map. And then also there's a little how to make a barn quilt, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna highlight the first 12 barn quilts. And these are all pictured, They're, they go in order here. But the first one is the one that's actually on Fern Mercury's house. Her husband was a clock maker, repairer, um, and he dabbled in this over the years um, after he retired. And she wanted something to kind of represent time or travel. And the closest one that she could come up with was Mariner's compass. I pointed out to her that it's also one of the most difficult ones to paint. Um, uh, the uh, Sawtooth Star is just down the road. That was the one that um, the wife was so disappointed that hers didn't get hung up early in the day on Mother's Day, but her husband came to the rescue and made sure it got up. The next one is a little bit further down the road at an <clears throat> Cane Scenic River Farm, and it's the cornucopia or the nosegade. It's really faded now, and Fern is after all the home dem group members to freshen up their barn quilts if they started to fade. The next one, the Carpenter's Wheel, is on the parent farm, right across from the Abbey restaurant, and then the Abbey has one on their restaurant too, but it wasn't one of the original 20. Uh, the Blazing Star is on one of the cane farms. Um, you'd, be, you'd be turning off of Route 105, making a right-hand turn, and Cane Road goes up to East Sheldon Road. Then the Friendship Star um, variation is on the Stebbins Farm. Uh, the Evening Star is on the Parent Family Farm. Um, the Galaxy one, I don't think it's a farm. I think it's just on their house. Uh, <clears throat> the Maple Leaf is on one of the Magnum farms in, on the East Sheldon Road. The Tulips in Bloom, this one here, um, Doris Archambault. Yes, Doris Archambault. That's her uh, barn quilt. She not only painted her barn quilt, um, and all of these are four by four that I just showed you. She actually painted shutters for the windows on the same barn mm -hmm. that mi mimic the design of the tulips. <laughs> so you get a little bit more bang for your buck when you go to see that one. The next one is also on East Sheldon Road at, on a farm just beyond the Archambault Farm. And the final one, <clears throat> is no longer on the Sheldon Creek Mini Mart. It's moving, it moves around. But when it's hung, it's hung on point, so the basket is upright. We do have, even though the majority of ours are four foot or smaller in Franklin County, we do have three eight foot barn quilts. And all three of them can be viewed from Route 105. If you're driving into Sheldon, um, 
the one um, on your far left, the radiant star, is across from the Sheldon Mini Mart. It's a Shell station, gas station. And if you miss it, you need to go to your eye doctor and get your eyes checked. <laughs> you cannot miss it. It's huge. The barn, it, it's almost like the barn was built to that barn club. The one with the yellow background is called Cassiopeia. And the um, nosegay or cornucopia barn quilt, um, the woman that painted Cassiopeia painted, or the one that painted the nosegay or the cornucopia also painted Cassiopeia. It's on her daughter's house. This can also be viewed from Route 105 just before the Abbey restaurant, but it's kind of back off the road. You have to kind of look for it. Um, but if you look around, you'll be able to see it from Route 105. And then the last one on the Quonset Hut is, I call it the gateway to Richford because it's right on the right as you're going up Route 105 into Richford. So how do we document all of these um, barn quilts? Well, this is just a screenshot of the website. But I'll take you. Oh, and that simple map with all the dots is supported in the background by this data sheet. And all of these columns have a purpose. And um, the map, and I'll go to the map now, um, can be um, enlarged, could be made smaller, could focus in on a specific area, pull up one of the dots. <clears throat> Most of these dots reflect an individual town. But the Google Free Maps program only has 10 layers. So we can only have 10 colors. And there are 14 towns in Franklin County, plus a city <clears throat> that's its own governmental entity. Um, so we had to combine several of the towns together. And it's the ones that don't have very many. I think it's Fletcher, Fairfax, um, Fairfield, Highgate, and Georgia. So they're all reflected in the gold color. Sharon? Yes. Um, how many people in Sheldon? That's a big question. <laughs> how many people in Sheldon? Yeah, aren't there like a thousand people? Yeah, it's just a thousand. <laughs> That's what I find so amazing is that I don't know how many homes there are, but maybe 500 homes, and yet there are all those barn quilts in Sheldon. So it seems like at, if you're driving through that town, you would see one almost anywhere. Yes, yes, and you will, because there's a lot of them on Route 105. Sheldon and Enosburg keep fighting for the claim to fame of having the most barn quilts in their town. Um, right now, Enosburg has more barn quilts than Sheldon. But I wouldn't be surprised if Fern has plans to make that not so. <laughs> so I'm going to take you to the website. And here it is. The URL is Barn Quilts of Northern Vermont, all run together, .org. And this is what you'll see. Um, of course, the most prominent one, that radiant star, is featured. You can con you know, find out a little bit more about how the Barn Quilt Trail came to be. You can contact us, because we do have our own Gmail account. You can see the Quilt Trail brochure, also a way to make a barn quilt. And then you can see the full alphabetical listing. <clears throat> if you wanted to print this off, you could print it off. It's nine pages. Um, it's going to tax your eyesight because it's very, very small print. Um, but it's available. And this is ordered by um, alphabetically by road name and then within the road by number location. So that's a resource that's available to you. You can actually go to the map 
and you can enlarge it, move it around. See all the ones in St. Albans City, the little red dots. Um, but if you go to the full screen view, you have more opportunities to see stuff. So let's say you're out and you want to go see um, some barn quilts and your goal is to see all the barn quilts in one town. Well, then you go over here and you uncheck Bakersfield, Berkshire, Enosburg. Um, actually, we'll, we're going to see more than one. But if you go to Fletcher, there's only one in Fletcher. And I think, I think it's this one. Yes, this is the only one in Fletcher. And there it is. So you have the ability with this map, as I've shown, to single out individual towns. So let me click these all back up. So just showing you some more items. The westernmost barn quilt is actually close to my house and it's my neighbors. Or this is the easternmost, I'm sorry. This is the easternmost barn quilt. And there it is. This is one of those that was kind of difficult to photograph because um, of where it is and we don't like to walk on people's property to get the photograph. And as far as documentation, we try to collect the address. Sometimes that's very hard. Um, people in Vermont don't like to put their mailbox number on their mailbox sometimes, <laughs> unless the town makes them put their 911 address up. But um, then we collect geocords. And sometimes the geocords are not where the physical address is because the best viewing spot might be someplace other than the physical address, which we're going to get out of this and I'm going to take you to a spreadsheet and we're going to look at a few of the unique ones. So you saw ferns. This is mine. It's my husband calls it monster trails. And so a funny story along with this. My husband decided we needed a barn quilt at the bottom of our driveway. This one is hanging on an upright rock. I had planned to paint right on the rock. Well, my husband got tired of waiting for me to have the um, perfect weather to paint it on the rock. And he painted his own. But before that, he decided he was going to make his sister one for her house in Guilford, Vermont. And he, she loves sunflowers, so he wanted to make her a sunflower. So he said to me, he said, how much paint do I need for a, for, to paint this barn quilt? I said, a quart, just a quart. You're going to have more than enough. Well, he went to Ace Hardware. And the paint was on sale. The gallons were actually cheaper than the quarts. <laughs> so he bought a gallon of green. He got, bought a gallon of yellow. <laughs> and he bought a gallon of black. <laughs> he painted his sister's barn quilt, yellow, green, and black, used those colors. He painted a barn quilt for his other sister. And it was yellow, green, black. <laughs> he painted one for his brother. Guess what? Yellow, green, and black. And then he finally painted ours. And it's just yellow and green. <laughs> um, the westernmost barn quilt is in Swanton. The northernmost barn quilt is on the way to Canada in Berkshire, and it has two. The southernmost is in Georgia. 
very interesting. We captured this one this year. And it, they actually have two there. They bo they're both, they both look like this, otherwise there would be two pictures side by side on the website. Um, most barn quilts at one location is this one. There are six, and I, I don't even think they're one by ones. I think they're six inches. And they're on two posts on either side of the driveway. And that one is in Fairfield. So people come up with ingenious ways to show off their barn quilts. Um, the most difficult to photograph was this one. Um, I was taking the photograph, and every time I tried to take the photograph, I was looking through trees. So the camera focused on the trees. I finally had to tilt the camera down where it was pretty open, cap capture the side of the building so it focused on that, and then move the camera up so that the barn quilt was in focus. I thought we did a pretty good job on that one. Let's see, and this is one that's viewed from a different street. It's actually in Enosburg. It's, you see it right after you pass the intersection of Route 108 going off to the left as you're traveling on 105. And it's on the back of the house because if you go to 142 Champlain Street looking for the barn quill, you aren't gonna see it. But if you put the geocords that we have at the website in your GPS, you'll go to the place where you can view this from. And I think that's it, because I already showed you the Fletcher one. So let's get rid of all of this stuff and go back to, let me get to my right place. And from current slide. So some of the resources that are available to you, you can actually go to barnquiltinfo.com. This is a website created by Susie Perrin. And if you click on a state, I'll click on Vermont. And I'll, I just brought up a bigger. So it has Franklin County and Orange County highlighted. So if you click Franklin County, it's going to take you to the barn quilt of northern vermont.org. If you hit Orange County, it's going to take you to the barn quilt trail in the Chelsea area. And they have their own map um, and different information out there. Susie Perrin has also written two books. I have both of them here today. The first one was The Barn Quilts and the American Trail Movement. She actually writes about Donna Sue Groves in here. She met her. And she talks about all the barn quilts she found throughout the country. Um, her second book, shortly after that, is called Following the Barn Quilt Trail. Uh, both of these books are available on Amazon. Um, and there's a lot of pictures. And guess what? The Radiant Star is featured in her second book, in Sheldon. There's also, and I had pointed out the coloring books by John Leto, and you can find other coloring books out there. I know coloring is very meditative, um, so if you like to color and want to do something like plan for your barn quilt, you can get a barn quilt coloring book and pick out the designs you like and just color them in. You can also go on Facebook. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there. One in particular that I'm highlighting here is Barn Quilt Therapy. That is a Facebook uh, page that belongs to Kimberly Hess, and she does do barn quilt workshops um, throughout Vermont. Um, she typically has them in Essex, but she's willing to travel. Like if you wanted to get her at Fletcher Farm, she might be willing to teach a class there. 
Um, but she also will come, like our guild wants her to come do another bond quilt workshop. So there are resources in Vermont. There's resources on the web. And I think at this point, all 50 states have a barn quilt trail. I think, I think that's true. So what does the future hold? And now I'm moving into the Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail. <clears throat> Our trail, the trail in Franklin County, and the trail in Chelsea or Orange County, we're, we've dubbed the start of the Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail. We know that there's more barn quilts out there. So we need POC or points of contact. That was my military ease there. People said, what is a POC? <laughs> but point of contact for other northern Vermont counties. Are, we called ours barn quilts of northern Vermont because Susie Perrin had held a workshop in Lamoille County. And those girls have been after me to get it up on the website. But I said, hey, I don't have any time to do that. I need somebody to help me. Um, so I thought if we made the website Franklin County Barn Quilt Trail, we would be limited. But if we did Barn Quilts of Northern Vermont, we could add other counties like Chittenden, Lamoille, Orleans, Essex, etc. Um, of course, Mary Ann has already introduced herself. She's the president of the Green Mountains Quilters Guild, and she's trying hard through all of these information meetings to get the Vermont Barn Quilt Trail going. Um, and she needs help because she needs people throughout Vermont, just not in northern Vermont, but throughout Vermont, to document where the barn quilts are. And so how can you help? First and foremost, paint your own barn quilt and put it up on the side of your house, and then let somebody know where it is. And if you can get the geocords from the best viewing spot, on a publicly accessed road, take a picture. And once we've been posting it on the Facebook group, it's Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail. So if you do Facebook, search for Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail. You'll have to scroll down a little bit to find it. And once you get there, if you're on the right page, you're going to see the radiant star as the cover photo. So you can go there, you can post the information there in the Facebook group. I think that's become the repository of information for right now, for time being. If there is a specific point of contact, as I said, Kimberly Hess is the one for Chittenden County. I'm the one for Franklin County. Um, let them know that you have one so they can get it on their trail. Um, you could volunteer to collect or host the website for other areas of Vermont. Because our vision is that there's going to eventually be a website that is the Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail website. And instead of it trying to document all of the information like we do in Franklin County, it would You'd open it up and it'd say Franklin County, and you'd click that link, and what you'd be brought to our web page, um, our website. Or you might go to another county, and they might just have a listing on, the, on their link. Um, but the hope is to have a main Vermont State Barn Quilt Trail web page and links to trails throughout the state of Vermont. One thing, I've been, I tried to get my state representative to come with me, but he's over in Maine hunting or something other like that. So he said he couldn't come, but he told me to tell you all that if you really want the movement going, um, I'm hoping he'll get a resolution written. Sharon will be writing it for him. Send it to him, and he said, the quickest way to get it done is to have everybody at that meeting call their Vermont state representative, if they live in Vermont, and say, hey, there's an effort to develop a statewide barn quilt trail. 
And Penny, or Alan Penny DeMar, is his, Penny's his nickname, uh, is one of the people that's interested in passing a resolution, creating, designating, whatever the right words, whatever the words in the resolution will say. Um, and then I'm hoping that eventually the Vermont Tourism Department will realize what a gem it is to have all these barn quilt documented throughout the state. Because right now, quilters are crazy, crazy people. <laughs> right now, between September 1st and October 31st, there are quilters running all over New England visiting 58 quilt shops for the all New England shop hop. And if you told quilters that there was a Vermont State farm quilt trail, they'd come and they'd go look at it. You know, that if you build it, they will come. They will come because they're crazy people. <laughs> and you can also contact Mary Ann and ask her, how can you help? So that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. You talked about the origin of barn quilts in Vermont, but nationally, what's the oldest barn quilt on the record? The, well, technically, as we were looking up information, there have been barn quilts in the U.S. I read somewhere back to when the first settlers came, they would put different designs they might not have been a quilt block, but they were kind of in the fashion of a quilt block. The, what they call the American barn quilt trail movement was started by Donna Sue Grove, and she hung the first one in 2001. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Are there any New Hampshire Pardon? Are there any New Hampshire organizations somewhere? Well, let's just look here. <laughs> We're going to go to the. Let's see. We're going to pull up the map and then we're going to click New Hampshire. Up oh, the pages and found, so, you know. <laughs> um, so, it looks like they did have a page out there. So, it may be that they had something out there and now the link doesn't work because the person, because, I mean, for my husband and I to keep the barn quilt of northern Vermont, we have to pay a domain fee and a three year, I can't remember what the other fee is. So somebody has to put out the money and if you don't have the money and somebody doesn't want to continue just to do it out of the generosity of their heart, um, those links might be broken. But it looks like there was <clears throat> something out there at one point. So let's see if we put New Hampshire there's one, Sullivan County, New Hampshire, Let's see what comes up. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the second one. Yeah, that's the second one. Okay, that's the broken link. The second one is the Sullivan. <clears throat> and they also have a class um, in October. Newport is Pardon? Yeah, Newport, New Hampshire. A class being taught by Becky Leppold. He's in my school field. I took her class. Let's see if I tried clicking on the link and it brought me to Facebook. I'm wondering though, I'm just looking at this, I'm seeing that this has 2017, so 
But if you contact Becky Lovell, you may find some more information. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Um, similar to that, do you know any uh, people in Vermont who do classes about just how to execute one? Kimberly. Kimberly Hess, mm -hmm. Barn Quilt Therapy. If you okay. follow her Facebook page and contact her, um, she would be able to give you information. Okay. That. Yeah, she would have come today, but she's turning 50. <laughs> and she's a Kimberly Wood. Yes. It's on the handout. Okay. Um, so if we all contact her, she have her eight. Uh, yeah, table. she does private. She does private yeah. gatherings as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the back, ma'am. I was wondering uh, in your article here about how to make a farm quilt. Will this the Outdoor latex can I go out hold up in the winter? Um, the rain again this year? Yes, it will. I, my husband and I have been sealing ours with, um, it's John so Sanja, J O N S O N J A. It's actually meant to seal the M D O. But we actually seal the top of it, and you, you, there, the one that's hanging at my bottom of my driveway has been there at least six years, and it's not showing any signs of fading. And there's another one in Montgomery because you can't see my house from the road. So if I put a barn quilt on my house, I'm going to see it. That would be fine with me, but nobody else is going to see it. So I actually painted one. And we hung it on the Pratt Hall, the Montgomery Historical Society's um, extra outbuilding. And that's been up there probably close to 10 years. And because um, I put it up before I met Fern. Um, and it's not sealed with that stuff. It's not showing any deterioration. Can you spell that sealing for you? I think it's J-O-N. S O N J A. It's an art um, okay, material. Okay, Marianne. Okay. Well, I just want to show you some more barn books. Before you close your computer, can you bring up the Chelsea website? Oh, it's yeah. connected. Oh, yeah. Sure. Then we could just show it's that. It's much easier than switching computers. Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about the Chelsea Arts Collective. It was um, in 2017, um, they, a committee uh, of people uh, decided that they wanted to highlight the um, summer arts festival that they have in the green. So they were planning to start it in 2018. So. They gave people a year to plan their art quilts. And so a lot, of, I think my notes say 130 barn quilts have been created around Chelsea. Not necessarily all in Chelsea, but in that area. And they do have a map. And let's see if I can show you where that is. There. You can, down at the bottom of their website, which is on your handout, um, there's a little, there's a place, <coughs> the website is here, and down here is uh, a place to click for their trail, uh, a map of the trail. <coughs> and there's also a little scavenger hunt, in case you wanted to do that. Um, but let me just show you the, oops. There we go. This, <coughs> and I.